All right. Uh, okay, there's no name on this one, but okay. How do you structure your training during the week? For me, I am not necessarily in prep for competition. I'm not necessarily trying to get ready for anything major. So my form of training and my training schedule is probably going to look a little bit different than Jimmy and Ensema's. Mm. But for me right now, I try to train at jiu-jitsu four to six times a week, and I lift three days a week. Those lifting days are split up into um, what Phil DeRue would call a condensed conjugate. So instead of doing two max effort days, one for the upper body, one for the lower body, and two dynamic effort days, one for upper, one for lower. We condense that down into just three days. So one day would look like doing something really heavy for the lower body and then following that up with something really heavy and explosive for the upper body. Mm -hmm. The second day would be basically the same format but flipped around, something really heavy for the upper body, something really fast and explosive for the lower body. Mm. And then the third day, which is, you know, from Mark Bell is jacked and tan day. You're just literally yeah. just trying to get as jacked as possible, have a good time, and then head out of there. So I think a lot of people will ask this question looking for some sort of prescription. Like, okay, how many days do you lift? Because that's what I need to do. Or mm -hmm. how many days are you going to jujitsu? Because that's what I need to do. And it's really not about what Insim is doing. It's really not about what Jimmy's doing. It's not about what I'm doing. You need to find what works best for you, what allows you to make the most amount of progress in the shortest amount of time that you can actually sustain for the longest amount of time. Mm -hmm. So if that means that you're only going to the gym twice a week because that's all you can recover from, then that's great. You don't need to feel pressure to increase your training volume in the gym if it has a negative impact on your jujitsu training. Mm -hmm. If you're someone like Andrew or Andrew and I, we got uh, families, we got uh, other other stuff going on with work and things like that. Not that you guys don't, but Andrew and I aren't necessarily like top echelon competitors. Yeah. Our training habits and our training frequency looks very different. And so we can't expect to compare ourselves to your guys' form of training, mainly because our, our goals are different, our lifestyles are a little bit different, mm -hmm. and our priorities are lined up a little bit different. So for anyone that's asking, and I'm sure we have a lot other a lot more questions asking about how many days you should lift, how should you tr structure training, got to find what works best for you, something that you can recover from, something that you can maintain over a long period of time, and something that allows you to make a lot of progress while you're at it. I have a question for you, Josh, yes. because you also have a concierge type of program mm -hmm. for high-level jiu-jitsu athletes. Mm -hmm. So for the jiu-jitsu athlete, and Jimmy, this is a question for you too, mm -hmm. for the jiu-jitsu athlete who is focused on jiu-jitsu, I'm a competitor in jiu-jitsu, and you want to try to figure out the amount of time they should be training per week, everyone has different amounts of time, but what are your thought processes when you go about that? I think it depends on how they're structuring their skills training. There are some jiu-jitsu schools where they train super hard all the time, mm -hmm. which oftentimes leaves athletes with not much mm -hmm. room to recover from additional weight training or additional strength training. So in that case, I might implement something very similar to Corey Schlesinger, where we're just micro-dosing a couple exercises, maybe two exercises before every jiu-jitsu session over the course of, say, maybe five, six days a week. Nothing super intense, nothing uh, high volume. There are other schools where they spend a lot more time focused on technique and drilling, so it's a little bit easier to recover from those skill sessions. And so they have a little bit more room to do a 60-minute or maybe a 75-minute strength and conditioning session. And we might plug those in two, three times a week. I'd say for the most part with most of the athletes I've worked with, whether they're high level competitors or someone just starting out, it's usually a good idea to start, you know, strength training two to four times a week. There's not a whole lot of guys that I've seen that have been super successful competing in jujitsu, lifting super hardcore six days a week <laughs> and training jujitsu super hardcore six days a week. Mm -hmm. so they may need to dial things back a little bit have a little bit more realistic expectations about how much time you can spend in the gym versus how much time you're training on the mat. Yeah, I'll give you uh, my perspective from training Marigali, and he's a decently high-level <laughs> athlete. What I've come to find is like a lot of the, – the problem is is that let's say you are a, an avid competitor and you're trying to somehow communicate to your coach that you have a regimented lifting schedule. Thumbs up. Sweet, we're still training hard as fuck. You know, like it's hard to like get that through some people's head that like the recovery one is the priority amongst the jujitsu and the lifting. But in order to maximize what the lifting is doing for the jujitsu, there has to be some kind of give and take there. And I think a lot of coaches have a hard time seeing that. And so, in a perfect world, I'd be able to say, communicate to your jujitsu coach about your lifting schedule and figure out a way to make that coincide with your jujitsu schedule. The reason why observing how the people at New Wave work, I like it is because John's there every single day, two times a day at Roka, two times a day at Henzo's, one time doing MMA. So he's always there, right? Mm -hmm. His dedication is guaranteed. 
But for the athlete themselves, John isn't necessarily contingent on you have to be training every single day with the best guys of the room super, super hard. He kind of leaves that up to the athletes. And so for Marigali, he trains with me four days a week in the morning, specifically while we're doing four days a week because he has a goal of strength and as well as building size specifically in the upper body. So we devise a program where we're doing a little bit higher frequency in the gym so we have a little bit more time to break muscle down, rebuild it, and get a little bit bigger. But this is like a six-month six month period that we're really working on. After that, break it down to more so two, three days a week, focus on maintaining and building strength slowly over time. So something like him where – Currently, he wants to use lifting to get better at jujitsu, get bigger, get stronger, so the frequency raises for a controlled period of time. After that, though, when he's maybe more in season or content with the gains that he's made, we bring the frequency down, focus more on maintaining, then he can allocate more time for the jujitsu training. So whatever ability level you're at, take what I just said, break it down to something that's re- relatable or, or realistic for you. And then, and then build off of that. That would be my best general advice for the question. And I'll say this, I'll keep this very short. Um, figure out what your goal is. You know, are you someone who wants to, you know, compete at the level of Nicholas Marigali <laughs> and compete all the time? And your, your focus is being a jujitsu athlete. You might need to like, you still need strength conditioning, but it's not going to be your focus. You're not going to be focusing on those sessions. Those sessions are to help your jujitsu. Is your goal instead to focus on your body composition? You're trying to build some muscle. Maybe you'd want to build some strength and jujitsu is a hobby for you. Well, go and train mm-hmm. jujitsu, uh, control your intensity when you're on the mat, focus on technique. Don't go super hard all the time so that you have the ability to go into the gym and have good, strong, hard training sessions. It's You can balance these things, but the thing is, is your goal has to be kept in mind during all of yeah. them. All righty. How long should a strength session last for a jiu-jitsu athlete? I think that coincides with the last answer, which is it, it just doesn't, there's no right or wrong answer there. And I think naturally, let's say if you're a power lifter doing jiu-jitsu, your sessions will probably naturally be a little bit longer, especially if you're lifting a little bit more weight and you're taking the pauses you're sitting down between every single set you're drinking your little kool-aid you know, going back to it, post, it might take three hours every set on your story on instagram yeah. and then, then go yeah <laughs> <laughs> but if that's not you you could get away with 30 minutes you get away with 60 90 maybe 90 is like a general sweet spot if you have a decent amount of exercise selection and you want enough rest time 60 minutes you can still do a lot 30 minutes you know i've had in-person clients in the past where i know for a fact the only time that they're lifting that week is probably realistically 45 minutes with me after we do our warm up and they've made very trackable progress from week to week to week as long as the consistency is there and even with my online clients when they ask me how many times do you think I should be lifting a week and I start with well honestly if you really wanted to we could get stronger with one day a week now in accordance to my price they don't really like hearing that so <laughs> I'm like okay we'll lift a little bit more but but to that point you can as long as your exercise selection is good and it covers a lot you can get stronger with very little time and very little days in the gym. You bring up an, an excellent point. There's a lot of stuff uh, that Marcus said about you know doing as much as you can with as little time in the gym as possible. And Mark's also talked about how you know Mark is one of the strongest people who's ever lived. He set world records in all these different different lifts, and he's talked about how long his bench workouts were mm-hmm. and how long his squat workouts were. Mm-hmm. But you look at the guy and you look at what he's doing now. He's not doing these three hour bench workouts anymore. Mm-hmm. He's not doing these five hour squat workouts where every set you got to get in your suit again <laughs> and and mm-hmm. do some crazy thousand pound squat. And so I think a lot of times people will look at you know who is you know at the peak of what they want to achieve, they'll look at a guy like C Bum and look at his workouts. They'll look at, you know, maybe you guys and say, like, oh, I gotta replicate what they're doing. And again, it's about finding what works best for you and maybe implementing some trial and error. Can you do a workout that takes only 90 minutes and get great results? Awesome. Did you spend those 90 minutes talking a lot and <laughs> wasting yeah. time? Could you get all that work done in 45 minutes and have 45 extra minutes right. to take a nap between training sessions, get some more food in or whatever you need to do? So implement some trial and error and find that sweet spot for you. For some people, that might be 30 minutes. Some people, that might be 90 minutes. For other people, it might be somewhere between those two. Mm-hmm. And when you're near to strength training, like we talked about earlier, it's a skill. So you might your training sessions might be a little bit shorter because you can't handle the fatigue that from the movements you're getting in the gym. Over time, you might be able to handle more volume, and then your training sessions might be a little bit longer Mm -hmm. but give yourself the time to adapt to strength training to get better at strength training so that you can progress consistently and then over time maybe your sessions are 45 minutes or maybe they're 60 but they don't have to be a 90 minute session or a 60 minute session get a lot done like josh said in 30 minutes